Good morning, everyone. My name is Jera Jayendran Prasanna. I'm a PhD student of Laboratory of Scientism and Manti Material in a Federal University, Santa Maria. And today I'm going to give a talk about the uh, fabrication of RERAM, namely Receive Random Access Memory Devices from the Copper Oxide Nanoparticles. And uh, here is my outline. I chart with my objective and then I'll give a small introduction about the evolution of the memory technologies and uh, uh, the data storages and their classification. And also I'll give a basic introduction about the RERAM and the physical analogy of the memory store devices and uh, uh, give an introduction about the RERAM device structure and uh, how it works and how the switching mechanism works in RERAM. Also, then I will uh, wind up with the advantages and uh, constraints. Also, I will uh, discuss a little bit about how the RERAM technologies are different from the other memory technologies that are currently available. In the other section, I will discuss about the devices that I have fabricated and how uh, using the copper oxide, half new oxide and copper oxide and copper zinc oxide and copper chromium oxide. Also, I, how I characterize it, I, how I done the characterization of it. Then, uh, then I move forward to the conclusion and then I wind up with the talk with the scope of future work. My objective is to fabricate the cost effective memory devices uh, for the future technological needs and to safeguard the environment by the uh, creating devices from a low toxic and abundant material. Because if, if you are to, if you are doing uh, some more research on the abundant material that are available on the earth, then we can easily create a very cost effective memory, uh, memory and other electronic devices for our future technological needs. Um, here I'm talking about the small uh, uh, introduction about the, how the memory technology is uh, evolved. In in the um, um, like in the past centuries, like people have used uh, bamboos, papers, and stones and Bones they have uh, to uh, to record and keep keep the tra uh, track of their history, and um, later when the digitalization uh, digitalization comes, people have started using the electronic devices such as solid state drives, these um, hard drive, uh, solid state hard drives, uh, pen drives, and compact disks. Also, these memory memory devices we are using in our daily lives, like we are using mobile uh, smartphones, computers tablets and also in the automotive vehicles we are using and in everywhere in our day-to-day -day life we are uh, we are actually using the uh, memory devices so that's the reason why um, after the emergence of this digital era what happened is like the virtual the physical and the virtual form of data storing device requirements are skyrocketing nowadays and uh, the uh, demand is actually increasing to store and then retain the data. The people want to uh, store the data, also they want to retain the data uh, without any damage for a while. And uh, the um, 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 the overall amount of data uh, exchanged through the internet crosses uh, 40 zeta bytes uh, in last year. And uh, these, these forecasts for the upcoming years also indicates that the world needs more advanced technological solutions to fulfill the uh, technological needs. This, um, here I'm talking a little bit about uh, data storage and how uh, its classification works. We know that in a computer system, we are giving an input to the input to the computer memory, and then uh, it will pro the computer CP will process, but whatever the input we are giving, and then the CP will give the uh, output to the memory, and then we are getting the output in in the memory devices. The input data, like we can uh, enter the input data straight into the computer. And uh, however, the early adopters of the computer discovered manually entering data all the time uh, was both because we are uh, we, uh, because when the power is down, what happens is like uh, whatever the data we are uh, manually entered, we need to uh, we need to do the work again and again. So that will consume a lot of time and energy from our side, and so. For that, the random access memory, these devices have the capacity to retain the data when even the power of the computer is down. And also the memory, uh, what actually uh, makes uh, the constraint is like the memory retention and the storage capacity are the major constraints in the random access memory uh, devices. And uh, these uh, storage devices, we can be using the physical storage uh, devices like our uh, solid state disk, and also we can store the data in clouds. And um, in modern, like we, we, we saw that in modern uh, electrical, uh, like electronic equipments and uh, 
the in, in mobile phones uh, and uh, digital cameras and everywhere we are seeing there is a memory device we need a memory device that's the reason why in the semiconductor market around 20 to 30 percentage of the market account for um, memory devices and these memory devices they can be classified these semiconductor memory devices they can be classified into two types one is a non volatile memory devices and the non volatile memory devices in volatile memory devices, what happens, uh, it, it cannot store or retain the data when the external power is, uh, when without an external power. And in non-volatile data, it can retain and store the information even without an external power. This is the reason why in the non-volatile memory market is uh, growing up and up. And also, uh, the demand of nano-scale devices are skyrocketing. Um, because people need uh, very small devices to you. Uh, to for their uh, users friendly and for their convenience to use and these are some of the um, dominant technologies that are dominant memory technologies that are uh, available in our current market that is a, uh, um, uh, phase change random access memory ferroelectric random access memory magnetic memory and also the restive random access memory my work is uh, completely based on this random access memory restive random access memory here I'm giving an introduction to the receive random um, access memory and also give a um, physical uh, analogy of the memory stress. A RERAM, uh, a RERAM is a, a random, receive random access memory is a simple structure with a metal insulator metal um, uh, metal configuration. And uh, it, it's a type of a memory stress technology. Memory stress is uh, actually memory stress is known as the fourth fundamental two terminal circuit uh, element uh, following the resistance capacitor and inductor on our circuit theory and this was this theoretical model was actually uh, uh, first proposed by professor Lian Shua in 1971 and the first uh, uh, fabricated device the first fabricated device was done by uh, in 19 uh, in 2008 by Stanley Williams at the HB laboratory here, uh, here uh, is uh, how the uh, how Lian Shua have described the uh, memory state technology. Like this is a physical analogy how, how he described. Like he he actually considered it's like a it's a it's a kind of a special kind of pipe and uh, uh, it's uh, whose diameter is varies according to the amount of uh, amount of current passing through it. Actually, with the current passing through it, the uh, diameter of the pipe is increasing. And when the power is cut down, what happens is like it, it will it will retain the diameter it will retain the diameter uh, same diameter, and which uh, indicates that it, it it can remember how much current was previously flow through it. This is the uh, analogy of memory that uh, Professor Ian Shua proposed. And uh, RERAM is a non volatile non volatile technology. And the memory type uh, that the functions by altering the resistance of solid dielectric material and the thin film activator or thin film activator. The resistance of the uh, device actually varies with a uh, different voltage passing through it. This is a RERAM device structure and uh, uh, working of the device. Here, uh, uh, this is actually uh, a device with a metal insulator, metal uh, configuration. And uh, here I am using a silicon as the um, bottom electrode and gold as the top electrode and the uh, intermediate layer is uh, I, I, I take it as copper oxide is the intermediate layer I take in here two conducting electrode like uh, what is a restive random access memory it's a very simple structure it, it is having a two uh, conducting electrodes at sandwich between an insulating switching layer and the uh, restive uh, it, it has a very uh, simple uh, stack configuration and uh, what happens is like here, uh, this is a, a high resistance state because it, it's, a, it's an insulator and it's a high resistance state when um, uh, like uh, material, uh, the active layer of the electrode or the insulator or the oxide material can cause a resistive switching from a high resistive state, from a high resistive state to a lower resistive state. Here, how uh, the conduction works is like here uh, they are forming a uh, conducting path or conducting filament it's forming from the top electrode to the bottom electrode and through that it, it, it's a conduction is happening after uh, after like we are applying some voltage to the um, uh, top electrode and uh, the conduction path is formed 
and the conduction path uh, can be uh, may result from either the uh, metal migration um, migration or the oxygen vacancy uh, oxygen vacancy here um, describing a little bit about the switching mechanism of how the reram switching mechanism of how the reram works the switching modes can be classified into two types one is called the uh, unipolar and the other one is called the uh, bipolar in uh, in unipolar in unipolar what happens is like um, uh, the direction does not depend on the polarity of the applied voltage but in the case of a bipolar what happens is like it it, it um it depends on the uh, it is very sensitive to the polarity of the applied voltage and the set and reset occurs in the opposite polarity here this uh, when we are applying a voltage here and uh, then the set and reset is hap um, happening in the opposite poles in the first coordinate and the third coordinate pole and uh, here uh, there are a lot of other memory technologies are there in in our current market but why we are choosing the restive random access memory because this uh, all having high is read and write and high density everything they have but the problem is like uh, scaling high scaling problem is a major uh, scaling and uh, cost the fabrication cost is a major reason um, by uh, major reason that uh, that major constraints to the other memory technologies and that is that's a very um, that is the reason why we are um, very um, that's the reason behind the demand of this uh, restive random access memory because we can uh, the uh, we can um, uh, have we can fabricate it in a very uh, low cost method here are uh, there are uh, here are the some advantages and constraints and uh, in it, it can reram operates in a very uh, faster time scale and has a very simpler and uh, smaller in scale size and also it consumes a very less energy which allow to extend the battery life of the devices and it has a very quick uh, read write uh, speed in just few nanoseconds and but it has very few constraints people have uh, detected like it, uh, the performance of, uh, the performance and the speed will never match with the volatile volatile memory um, dynamic volatile memory technology dynamic random access memory and from transistors uh, in this section i'm uh, giving a little bit about um, uh, uh, introduction about how i fabricated and how i characterization characterized my devices this is the first device that i uh, fabricated using the copper ox copper oxide as the active layer in the metal metal uh, instead of metal stack uh, this copper uh, oxide is in the uh, i have sandwiched the copper oxide in uh, in silicon and gold electrodes in between the silicon and gold electrodes and copper oxide is actually widely studied and it is a promising very promising candidate for the ex with a very excellent properties and also the non toxic non toxic behavior and uh, the abundance on earth these are the major factors why i choose copper oxide for fabricating this reram device and uh, <clears throat> here, here uh, this is a uh, 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 sputtering magneton sputtering filinger magneton sputtering system that i have used for the fabrication of my uh, copper oxide uh, device and uh, uh, the silicon and silicon dioxide p type substrate is uh, was i used and the copper oxide thickness is approximately 100 nanometer i deposited and uh, this uh, i used a 4 inch copper uh, target uh, under the argon atmosphere with a 90 watt power is used and also before the deposition, I have performed all the uh, um, all the cl uh, standard cleaning process using the ultrasound sonication sonicator bath, and and this sub and uh, I I fixed the substrate substrate rotation to twenty rotation per minute, and the room I the, uh, this was this deposition was done at room temperature, and around twenty minutes I, I carried out the deposition. Okay. After depositing the copper on top of this silicon silicon dioxide substrate, I go for a post annealing of different different temperatures uh, to create copper to create completely copper oxide film, and uh, um, and also uh, some uh, most of the journals are indicating that the annealing can the post annealing can help to improve the neuromorphic uh, neuromorphic and the rusty switching characteristics in devices. Here also I used a uh, top electrode. I use top electrode. I used a um, gold, and I used the thermal deposition technique to deposit the gold. 
and this is the same image of the prepared copper oxide uh, nanoparticles and uh, uh, this surface of uh, uh, from this m i uh, obtained the surface topology of the prepared copper oxide and uh, this uh, the grain size is come, comes around uh, a few nanometer in like 17 18 nanometer grain size i found Uh, this is a, a, a XPS spectra that I performed to identify the element, what materials present in it, and it's showing some. Uh, it's showing the copper and oxygen peaks, but a few peaks um, uh, still. I, I in, in few peaks I I didn't identify, but um, and here uh, is IV measurements that I have performed to obtain the rusty switching characteristics of the copper oxide. Uh, copper oxide device and uh, the top electrode is gold and uh, the bottom is silicon what happens is when i applied a, when i applied a particular when i applied a voltage here the reset uh, here the reset uh, sorry set voltage forms and uh, then uh, there is a sudden there is a sudden uh, uh, movement in the current we can see here because at this region the filament formation happens then there is a sudden surge in the current and uh, then uh, the reset to formation the reset to formation is happens in gradually and uh, this is where the uh, reset voltage and uh, this is known as the um, uh, uh, this is known as the uh, stop b stop that, that is from uh, this this reset like uh, here this point uh, this uh, voltage reset we are getting from uh, the device and this we stop we are getting uh, from the negative c voltage that we have applied and uh, in this device i need i am uh, like the cycle to read how long the this device can retain in a particular state in on state and off, off state how long it can retain that uh, actually that that work is under uh, progress and this this is a, another device with uh, copper oxide and half new oxide and uh, it's a tri it's a tri layer device and uh, the uh, bottom and top electrode i maintain same uh, gold and uh, silicon and because why i choose half new oxide is like half new oxide is a widely studied uh, in uh, rera memory technologies and also in transition metal oxide it has a very quick switching speed it is observed it's a very quick switching speed so what we have done is like we have um, because copper oxide we are getting the uh, rusty switching characteristic and also half name is uh, already uh, uh, people have published a, a lot about half new uh, device with half new oxide so we have combined this uh, half new oxide and copper oxide to create uh, a new new device and in this this half new oxide layer i was uh, deposited by the uh, pulse laser deposition system and also uh, the same uh, also the cleaning standard cleaning processes i have uh, followed up followed and uh, this to uh, to get a very high quality of the half new oxide, I, uh, uh, the target to the substrate distance I maintained at 40 millimeter, and the temperature I maintained 400 degrees Celsius during the entire time of the deposition, and the oxy the um, 30 SEM of oxygen was passed into the chamber before the deposition and maintained maintained till the deposition was over. Also, I used a laser power of one watt. This is the uh, real uh, device that I have fabricated uh, using uh, this PLD and uh, thermal evaporation technique. This half -neum, these two half neum oxide layers I have uh, fabricated with the uh, PLD system and this copper oxide. Uh, okay, this uh, this copper oxide layer was fabricated uh, by using thermal evaporation technique, and the, the copper oxide thickness I have maintained at ten nanometer and ten nanometer. This is the XP spectrum of uh, the half neum oxide uh, on top of silicon substrate. Here, uh, this is the IV characteristics of the fabricated this uh, device, this half neum oxide copper oxide half neum oxide tri layer device. These these IV curves are showing uh, in uh, by changing the uh, half neum oxide thickness. We are getting, by changing the half neum oxide thickness. And uh, this is a this is a multi multi state uh, uh, multi state uh, switching device we are getting uh, and in that the half new oxide thickness is approximately 50 nanometer and the 
Coprox is the same. Uh, it's constant at we kept constant for 10 nanometer, and in that case we are getting a multi-state switching. This one is actually um, uh, uh, like uh, we, it just sta started, uh, but uh, we haven't uh, done. Uh, but uh, to only just fabricated this device. And this is also uh, this device, this copper zinc oxide device is also fabricated by using this sputtering system. And uh, this, these are the same uh, images and this is a UDS data. And the UDS data is indicating the, indicating uh, the it's not a valid data, but it's indicating uh, the, what are the materials present in this device. So this is, this was another one that uh, we uh, plan for to uh, plan to do the uh, another uh, device that is the uh, one with uh, copper chromium oxide as the active layer. I kept the top and bottom electrode the same and then change the um, active layer in the middle layer to copper chromium oxide. This is a same image I'm getting from it and also in the UDS data it's getting that okay the, uh, the presence of uh, copper and chromium and oxygen is showing in the UDS. There is a um, conclusion is that the copper oxide, uh, uh, copper oxide because of the abundance in uh, because of uh, large abundance in air, the copper oxide emitters have, have an uh, excellent potential to meet the rising artificial neural network demand. Also, uh, the different uh, physical uh, vapor deposition method that I have used is uh, pulse laser deposition method, um, thermal evaporation, and the sputtering technique. These all are. Uh, giving showing some interesting thin film quality with uh, uh, high quality devices for the future memories. And um, this uh, copper oxide uh, devices uh, like in 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 copper oxide half new oxide copper uh, sorry um, in silicon half new oxide copper oxide half new oxide device uh, around 50 nanometer of uh, approximately 50 nanometer of half new thickness and there approximately 10 nanometer of copper oxide thickness. We are getting a multi multi level switching device, and uh, the quality and availability of copper oxide film shows the great potential to conquer the future technological needs. And also, the another thing is like it is very environmentally favorable and non toxic behavior. And and uh, here uh, is the scope of future work. Like this copper oxide uh, is we have seen that the copper oxide with the copper oxide we are getting the. Um, uh, uh, rusty switching memory devices. So uh, this is an excellent candidate for the future rusty random access memory application. And these devices are also exhibiting neuromorphic properties, making it possible to uh, use one device for both purposes. Also, uh, this um, copper oxide and half new oxide, this uh, and this tri-layer devices is actually uh, forming some multi level multi level uh, switching multi level switching so wh what is my plan is like uh, uh, my plan is just um, uh, to study to fa uh, it's already fabricated but to study the properties the neuromorphic and the memory properties of the copper zinc oxide and copper chromium oxide uh, uh, device uh, devices and um, and uh, to to get a uh, to obtain some multi level multi state um, devices uh, later then uh, I have planned to combine with this with the half new oxide. It's it just like half new oxide, copper zinc oxide, half new oxide like that. So after the completion of all this, uh, uh, we will create uh, and analyze the uh, with the half new uh, with uh, half new oxide. These are the references that I have used. Thank you.